Hey everyone and welcome back. This is Chesh from JJ Plays Games and we're going to be doing a Cascade based deck tech. I know it's a bit weird, it's Cascade, but trust me, we will get there. So we're playing Averna the Chaos Bloom. This is one green, one blue and one red for a legendary creature elemental shaman for two as you Cascade. Now this is very important. This commander has, technically speaking, no impact on the game and no ability. Sort of. So as you Cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. Now, because this commander is so cheap, it doesn't even have Cascade. I wish that this had Cascade. I really do, that it came in and it Cascaded already. But uh, we have ways to uh, make this really cool, so we will get there in a second. And those edge foils look amazing. The first thing we need to think about is we need ways to scry or manipulate the top of our deck for when we do end up cascading so we can make sure it's not a cascade failure. Huh? Huh? Name of the deck? Cascade failure? Now you know why. So first up is a brainstorm for one blue instant draw three cards put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. We want our scry effects to be as cheap as possible if we can. Uh, just because most of the cascading stuff and most of the stuff to cascade that you'll see later on are a bit expensive. We have a ponder. This is a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library and then put them back in any order. You may shuffle your library and then draw a card. We have uh, preordain. This is one blue. Scry two and then draw a card. We have Nissa, Steward of Elements. This is one of the most fantastic, I'm going to say, mid mid-tier commander cards for planeswalkers that have ever been produced uh so one simic in other words a blue and a green and x and then it comes in with x loyalty counters which is fantastic so plus two to scry two or zero look at the top card of your library if it's a land card or a creature card with convert a mana cost less than or equal to the number of loyalty counters on nissa then you may put that onto the battlefield remember that's not casting that will come in later where we need to actually cast creatures so eh, just more here for the scry untap up to two target lands you control they become five five elemental creatures with flying and haste until the end of turn they are still lands continuing the scry we have the three temples we have temple of mastery we have temple of abandon and we have the temple of epiphany so they will all be our scry lands oh 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 Oh, of course, because we're playing so much scry and a little bit of manipulation off the top, we want to play Rashmi Eternity's Crafter, one of my favorite commanders ever produced. This is two colors and a simic for a legendary elf druid 2-3. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with a converted mana cost that is less than the spell that you've cast, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. Uh, if you don't cast the reveal card, put it into your hand. Alchemist Refuge, of course, goes really well with our uh, Rashmi. So this is more just for the blue-green tap, and you can cast non-land cards this turn as though they had Flash. Seedborn Muse allows us to untap all opponents we control, including our Mana Rocks during each other player's uh, untap step. And a Wilderness Reclamation, beginning of our end step, we get to untap all lands we control. Okay, great. So... We already have some library manipulation. Uh, we're already looking at ways that we can change up our deck so that when we do Cascade, we can get those lands as much as we possibly can. Let's get into the ramp package. This is a little bit big. So we've got Lana World Elves for a single green. We've got Birds of Paradise for a single green that produces any color. We have a Soul Ring, of course. We have a Coiling Oracle, which is maybe pseudo ramp, I guess. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. There was a train. Choo choo. Uh, so when Coiling Oracle enters the battlefield, fill the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. So either way, it just draws us a card, which will benefit us later as well. Lotus Cobra. This is a pseudo ramp again. So one green and one colors for a snack. These motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking plane. Uh, this is a 2-1 with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one color of mana. Uh, one mana of any color to your mana pool. We've got Steve. This is one green and one colors for a snake shaman. There is not a snake sub theme, I swear. This is a 1 1. Sacrifice Steve. Search a library for a basic land card. Put that card on the battlefield tapped. Shuffle your library. 
Arcane Signet, of course, everyone's favorite, now not overpriced card. Add one color of any color. Doxlight Exorcionist uh, is very good uh, and, and probably very expensive still as a single card from a commander set. Uh, just simply because it's played in uh, multiple different formats, I believe. But it's a really, really amazing commander card. One red and one colors for a goblin pirate. And when it enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. Pseudo ramp is great. Rampant growth. It even has ramp in the name. One colors and one green for a sorcery search library for basic land card. Put onto the battlefield tapped. Shuffle your library. Far seek. Allows you to go and look for anything except for a forest. Sylvan Scrying allows you to look for any land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Commander Sphere, of course, uh, three colors for an artifact. Tap it for any one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Sacrifice it to draw a card. We have another Scry card here in the form of a Seer's Lantern. The weakest of our mana rocks, but it has Scry, so still pretty good. Burnished Heart, speaking of uh, weak ramp effects, three colors for a 2-2. Two, two. For three, sacrifice the Burnished Heart, and then search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, shuffle your library. We have a Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, two green and the colors for an Elf Scout, 2-3. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. Um, it's an interesting one, and I uh, uh, just play it as a really just a mana dork. So one green and tap to add the X mana of any combination of any colors to your mana pool. I should say combination of colors, whatever. Where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You've got some big stuff in here, so that should pay off. We have a cultivate, of course. This is two colors and a green. Such a library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one of the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand and then shuffle your library. Hydel is in here for all that card draw. So a Simic and two colors for a human wizard. Two, three. Tap it and add colors to mana pool for each card you've drawn this turn. Mole Drifter to draw cards. When it ends the battlefield, you draw two. We have Guardian Project. So whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you don't have to cast them. Ah, uh, yeah. If it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, then draw a card. This one does brew, bleh, does need you to actually cast a card, but we do have Beast Whisperer, so whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. And then we have a Nyx Bloom Ancient. So, four colors, green, 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 for an elemental 5-5 five, five with Trample. If you tap a permanent four mana, it produces three times that much mana instead, which is... Just a massive, massive, sexy mana rock, I guess, if that's your kind of fancy. With all of that ramp, with all of that landfall, huh? What are we looking at? Well, we of course want to play Fabled Passage, Flooded Strand, Wooded Foothills, Bloodstained Mire, and Evolving Wilds. For our payoffs for lands coming in, because of course, remember that we are getting technical landfall from our commander as well when we're cascading. So, we want good value. Valakut Exploration, Enchantment for two colors and a red. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library, and you can play that card as long as it remains exiled. Pretty cool. At the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard. Then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. So with our heap of landfall triggers, it's actually pretty cool that you can whittle down your opponents using ex Exploration as a backup. Scoot Swarm, of course, if you're not aware of this, this is probably one of the most broken landfall creatures you will see in your entire lifetime. Two colors and a green for an insect landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 green insect creature token. Doesn't sound so bad. Well, if you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. I have maxed this out to like 100 tokens in a couple of turns. It is disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, we of course have Field of the Dead. Enter Battlefield tapped, taps for a colorless, 
and when Field of the Dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, pretty easy in this deck by the way, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So we are playing uh, the tap lands, the the the, uh, the pay, pay life to untap lands, whatever you want to call them. Um, pain lands, I guess, but that's not really true because pain lands were from the 8th edition and before. Don't worry, it's a whole thing. Um, but we are playing enough lands to get through that. We're only playing uh, four islands, four forests, and three mountains in this deck as our basic lands. Everything else is non-basic. So yes, we can get caught out by that, but it's going to make our Field of the Dead better. Rampaging Bayless, of course, is one of our kill cards, as well as Landfall. Four colors and two green, Trample, Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 green beast creature token. Uh, we're not playing Adventure of Zendikar, and I probably need to correct that, because that's also a cool kill card. We have Omnath, Locus of Rage. This is three colors to red, two green for a legendary elemental 5-5 five, five with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token. And whenever Omnath or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals three damage to any target. We do not have an elemental sub theme. I have considered it. All right, next up, we want to get on to our Cascade and Pseudo Cascade package. So we have a Shardless Agent. This is uh, a Simic and a Colorless for an Artifact Human Rogue 2-2 with Cascade. We then have Bloodbraid Elf, a Hasty Elf Berserker for two colors and a Gruel for a 3-2 with Cascade. We have our Forceful Denial. This is five mana to counter a target spell with Cascade. Natural Reclamation, which is one of my favorites. Four colors and a green. Instant Cascade, destroy target artifact or enchantment. We have one of our most fun cards in the deck, and we have enough six, car six cost cards in this deck to absolutely support this. This is Imoti Celebrant of Bounty. This was originally going to be the commander, uh, but I decided that I wanted to use the landfall commander instead. Three colors and a Simic for a legendary Naga Druid 3-1. Tiny, tiny little thing. It cascades itself, which is amazing, but spells you cast with a converter mana cost of six or greater have cascade. Speaking of six or greater, we've got Kadama of the East Tree, four colors and two green for a legendary spirit 6-6 six, six with reach. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or less of converter mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, this is cascading fun, because when you cascade a permanent in, and then Kadama triggers, and you're just like, well, that's an extra permanent into the battlefield. And then if you're drawing cards because it's creatures, there's a whole thing here, and it's very cool. Treasure Cruise, of course, because it's eight with Delve, draw three cards. Inferno Titan! Thanks, LR. Four colors and two red for a giant. It uh, has fire breathing, so you can pay a red to give it plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage divided as you choose against one, two, or three targets for a six, six. We have Genesis Ultimatum, uh, one of my favorite over six cost cards. Two green, three blue, two red sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards among them onto the battlefield, oh Kadama. And the rest into your hand, and then exile the ultimatum. Atali Primal Storm, you've seen this before. Legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur, for six mana. That's two red and four colors for each six six. Whenever Atali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast any number of non land cards exiled this way without paying the mana costs. Prying Eyes, four colors and two blue. Draw four cards, discard two. Boarding Party has its own cascade. Five colors and a red for a human pirate with haste cascade 6-3. And Maelstrom Colossus, which is eight mana for a cascading Colossus 7-7. Seven, seven. And of course, because we have the etched foil, a Maelstrom Wanderer. Five colorless, one green, one blue, one red legendary creature. Elemental 7-5. Creatures you control have haste. This is also a game ender. Cascade, cascade. 
Now, we don't have the Devastator. I don't have a copy yet. Sam from uh, Commander Crunch, that's cmdrcrunch.fireside.fm, our great podcast for Commander, is going to be supplying me with a copy for this deck. So that'll be updated in the future. So things like Court of Calling will get even nastier. Uh, X, green, 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 instant convoke. Search a library for a creature card with converted mana cost of X or less, put it on the battlefield, and shuffle your library. We'd probably go and get the end raise forerunners. Uh, there is supposed to be uh, a big boy in here uh, that is currently not in this deck because it's in my partner Hayden's deck. Um, so that'll be rectified at some point. Five colors and three green for some big old boars, some big pigs at 7-7, seven, seven, Vigilance, Trample, and Heist. Never forget Heist. I always forget that it is Heist. Uh, when Enray's Fawn Runners enters the battlefield, another cre well, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, gain Vigilance and Trample until the end of turn. Game Ender is, of course, Kassig Wolf Run, because we're going to have all those lands in play. X, red, green, tap, target creature gets plus X, plus O, gains trample until the end of turn. Casting that on your commander, smacking somebody in the face is, generally speaking, a Game Ender. If it is not, we can also go for a Relentless Assault. Two colors and two red, untap all creatures that attacked this turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Same with Seize the Day, three colors and a red free sorcery, untap target creature. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase, but also has flashback. There are ways to get these back. Uh, just like two different cards to get these back from the discard pile. So, <laughs> it's uh, pretty mean. That is it. This is a cascading deck, so it's been fantastic. I hope that you've really enjoyed this. Uh, this, obviously, video this video is proudly supported by guff.com.au for all of your gaming needs. And, of course, Josh and Pat's MTG Bazaar for all of your Australia, New Zealand, or Malaysia MTG auctions. So, thank you very much for that. Have fun, everyone. Happy New Year. It's 2021. Let's do some stupid, stupid decks. You got anything you want me to do out of maybe Commander Legends that you want to see a really cool deck tech on? Post it down below. I'm absolutely here to take requests. I'm going to try and do one of these at least once a fortnight, if not once a week, to keep you all entertained. We will see. Don't forget to catch up with us uh, for Commander the Distancing and our other shows, and uh, keep partying my nerdy lovely friends even if you're not nerds i'm not using that as a generative i'm using that as a positive because i'm a nerd and i love you all and i'm going away because i'm awkward bye